Okay, welcome back everybody to another lecture. Uh, this lecture's topic is prepared dishes using basic methods of cookery. The unit code is SITH triple C 005. Today we'll be going through all of the slides, so feel free to pause or revisit any sections of this lecture recording that you might find um, that you you know a bit confused or you didn't understand. We'll also be pausing throughout the activities that come through to the PowerPoint as we go through. So these are in your learner workbook. Complete them as we go through them. Uh, pause the video and then just complete them. And then feel free to come back at any moment and restart the video. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. So 1.1, confirm food production requirements from food preparation list and standard recipes. So establishing timings. The food preparation list and standard recipes should inform you how long it will take for completion of the dishes that you are planning on serving. They should allow for the amounts of time required for mixing and cooking different elements of the dish. However, you should be aware that preparation and cooling times may not be included. It is important that you leave enough time in readiness for the arrival of the dinner parties. Controlling portions. You may be expected to restrict the ingredients that are used in the preparation of pies or cakes. You should also consider the amount of time that it will take to prepare and cook the raw ingredients. It is quite common for a portion number to be assigned for the preparation of dishes from recipes. So in this case, if you need to increase or uh, decrease the amount, you would need to divide it uh, and then multiply it accordingly. So if I was going to say, okay, this uh, recipe was given for six people, then I would divide that recipe by six and then have an individual serve and then I would multiply that for 10 or 20 or 50. Right? This should signify the number of people that are to be served. It should also tell you the exact ingredients and measurements which are required. Considering quantities. You should be aware that recipes commonly state quantities that are to be produced and detail the specific measurements. A food preparation list may detail quantities that must be produced when catering for groups of specific sizes. You will be expected to use specialist measuring utensils to ensure the dish meets expectations. You may be expected to fulfill these special requests to so changing size vegetables instead of fries, uh, such as you know using different sauces, using specific cooking methods, you know instead of pan frying they might ask you to oven bake or instead of deep frying they might ask you to uh, air fry so putting candles on birthday cakes you know special requests could be such as you know you've got um, a wedding anniversary and they want a special um, seat somewhere or table somewhere positioned in the venue they might want a certain type of dish that they both like that you don't really have on the menu but you could produce so you're looking at how do we you know keep the customers happy and address their requests as um, humane you know humanly possible right. special dietary requirements may be you know, such as cultural religious dietary requirements if they're diabetic any exclusion so if they don't want any salt or chili if um, you're thinking about gluten free uh, lactose intolerant, low cholesterol, low fat, you know, smaller portion sizes or bigger portion sizes depending on, you know, what they're doing. If they are bodybuilders, they might be bulking up and they might be eating a lot. If they're on a weight loss plan, they might not be eating at all or eating uh, very few portions or they might be eating a lot of portions in smaller quantities. Then we've got vegan or vegetarianism and addressing those as well. Uh, so yeah, you're looking at halal, kosher, um, you know, pescatarian people, all those, all those things, okay? 
All right, activity 1A. What are the five food preparation requirements which should be confirmed when reading food preparation lists and standard recipes? So if we're looking at um, you know, a recipe, this should include the amount of time required, the ingredients, the serving portion, the equipment list, the methods that you'll be using. There's also could be suggestions on how to improve the recipe. You're also looking at um, you know the cuts that they might include with the specific vegetables or meats. Um, you're looking at the measurements. You've got what else? The name um, the full cooking preparation process time, the food, um, how the food you you know would look like on a plate, so a picture maybe, and um, specific alterations that you could make. So if you were going to use non-dairy, you know, cream, so you could use coconut cream instead of thickened cream, things like that, that you could have suggestions in the recipe. So just include any five in that, um, you know preparation requirements for standard recipes there and then we'll move on to the next one so number two which details may be signified by the portion number um, so if we're thinking about the portion number they're saying it's how many people it's going to be feeding so this is a recommended number this might not always be true as some people might eat too much some people might not eat enough but this is just a standard recommendation that would be beneficial nutritiously and be a balanced diet for a single person. So let's say if a recipe recommends the portion to be served to six people, it's because the amount of food that is being produced is a balanced amount and is uh, equal and satisfactory enough to feed six at that certain point of time or day or that meal or that function okay all right give five examples right, let's move on to the next one give five examples of special dietary requirements so we've got cultural um, you know requirements such as halal kosher you know being pescatarian um, there's also uh, dietary requirements such as you know low fat low um, low sugar or no sugar you're looking at having uh, lactose free gluten free you know, what else are you looking at you're looking at um, it could be that you're having specific portion sizes quantities there's so many so just include five that are mentioned or anything that you may uh, have in your thoughts and then we'll move on to the next one so unpause the video when you're ready and we can continue on 1.2 calculate ingredient amounts according to requirements converting quantities it might also be necessary to convert the ingredient measurements into forms that you understand and are comfortable working with so you may come across recipes referring to grams or ounces you will need to apply the basics of conversion so it, Nowadays it's really easy because you can just Google what the, you know, what one gram of, um, you know, measurement is into one ounce and it will give you the alternative um, and you can multiply it. So, we can use kitchen equipment such as scales, measuring cups, measuring spoons while we're measuring out those quantities. Alright, so activity 1B, convert the metric measurements in the following table into the imperial equivalents. So essentially what I want you to do is tell me, okay, what is one milligram in um, one ounce? Or what is one gram in, in a pound? Or, well, yeah, one kilogram into a pound. Um, what about a millimeter into gallon and one liter into yeah gallon or 
Um, yeah, so just do the imperial conversion there. Uh, what are three main pieces of equipment that may be used to establish the weights and quantities of ingredients? So we're looking at measuring cups, measuring spoons and scales. So the scales can be digital or um, analog depending on what you have in your workplace. Uh, analog might not be as accurate as digital but it just depends on how accurate your scale is in the first place. Okay so we've got measuring spoons, cups and your scales, so analog or digital. Okay. Alright. 1.3 Identify and select ingredients from stores according to recipe, quality, freshness, and stock rotation requirements. So, in this case, we're looking at it physically, we're smelling the item, we're looking at the packaging, we're looking at the dates, any labels that might have been on the best before dates, things like that, before we use the, the stock into our food production. So identifying and selecting ingredients, you should take care when identifying and selecting ingredients in preparation for cooking. You are advised to take down exact details of the recipe, specifying the quantities that will be required. You can take this with you and uh, cross off the items as, you, as they are picked. You might opt for alternatives and substitutes for reasons of price or special dietary requirements. So like I was saying before with an example of if they are, you know, of that they can't have lactose, so they can't eat dairy, you could choose to use coconut cream instead of uh, dairy cream. Ensuring quality and freshness. The ingredients that you select should be of the best possible quality. It will be necessary to carefully inspect the freshness, uh, fresh produce and ensure that there isn't any bruising or signs of damage. Vegetables and fruit will ideally be bright and colourful. You should pick the produce up and ensure that it has the textual qualities that you would expect. Considering stock rotation requirements, you should refer to the use by dates and consider the length of time the produce will last without any sacrifice in terms of quality or taste. Australian legislation specifies the need for products with a shelf life of under two years to have used by dates on the packaging. You should refer to these dated labels and ensure that the food can be expected to last long enough for your culinary purpose. So activity 1C, why should you visit shops to buy fresh produce rather than purchasing, uh, purchasing it via online stores? So, uh, very simple, when you're purchasing from online you can't hold the product you can't feel it, you can't see it you can't um, you know essentially guarantee that you're picking the best out of the bunch so it is much more preferable for you to go to the location instead of purchasing it online because you can pick and choose which uh, quali uh, quality and how much quantity you want to buy of that specific product depending on what the quality is there at the shop Compared to, let's say, if you buy it online, let's say you buy a kilo of bananas and it's not the quality that you'd want and maybe you only want to buy now, you've changed your mind and you only want to buy 200 grams, well, because you've already bought one kilo online, you can't send it back now. But if you had gone to a shop in person, you could see the quality that is there. Seasonally, maybe bananas are not lasting as long and it's not the right season. So you wouldn't buy one kilo of bananas and you would buy 200 grams of bananas. So you wouldn't have much wastage. Okay? Alright, number two. Specify five characteristics of high quality and fresh fruit and vegetables. So you want to look at them and see are they bright, are they vibrant, are they crisp, do they feel that they have a weight to them, are they rigid. If they're too soft then you know that it's already going off, right? We're also looking at the smell. Do they smell sweet? Do they, if they have a bad odor, then it's already going off, so we can't purchase that. 
if we're looking at the texture, does it feel smooth? Um, does it feel like it usually should feel in our hands or does it feel odd? Is it slimy? Is it, uh, does it have marks and spots? So we're looking at all these um, aspects and then we're looking at the taste. We're also looking at um, the weight of the item. So if you're uh, you know, using a consistent size, you don't want to buy something that's abnormal as it might not fit into your recipe. So you're looking at um, sight, meaning how it looks, how it feels, you're smelling the item, how it, you know, if it smells ripe, if it smells uh, fresh, you're feeling the weight and um, the rigidity of the item, you're looking at the texture um, and does it feel normal to you or on the top, in the, in the center, you're trying to identify any marks that shouldn't be there and you're also looking for the correct sizes okay so write those um, characteristics down and add any that you might also want to include and then we will move on to the next one so when you're ready unpause the video and we'll move forward check perishable supplies for spoilage or contamination prior to preparation checking perishable supplies you should be aware that perishable foods have to be kept in fridges at temperatures below 40 degrees for or freezers uh, temperatures below zero degrees so in this case this is telling us in Fahrenheit right so we will divide that and we will so essentially I think Fahrenheit is 2.1 so we divide that so if it's one degree in temp in Celsius it would be 2.1 degrees in Fahrenheit so we would divide that so essentially it's telling us to keep it at 18 degrees in um, in fridges and then it's telling us to keep it at negative 18 in freezers uh, so to ensure that they don't pose a health hazard they should smell as they did when they were first purchased and be firm to the touch you should look out for physical changes and signs of chemical reactions and micro, uh, microbial contamination contamination may occur when cooked product is contaminated by raw products Edible product is contaminated by waste. Product, people, or equipment that have been in contact, uh, you know, product is moved between food handling areas, may, you know, they pose a risk to your items if they have a disease, if they've got, um, you know, any ailments or viruses that might be transferred into your food. Identify three characteristics that you should consider when checking perishable foods. So, we're going back to... Um, we're looking at the smell, how they feel, if there are any signs of, uh, you know, wear or signs that there are any contamination. We're looking at the color. We're looking at if they... Um, are the correct sizes or not so identify any more characteristics that you'd like but those are the three that I would suggest so smell touch weight size um, yeah so you're thinking about the senses of your perishables if the packaging is damaged if it's got um, a long amount of uh, use by date or best before dates things like that all right Number two, identify three instances in which contamination may occur. So contamination may occur in places where people without correct um, protective equipment walk into your food production area and then hair or dirt or grime from their clothing can go into your food. Another instance may be you're preparing food in a construction area or an open area where there is um, air coming in or dust coming in or some sort of external debris like um, could be insects or vermin and they can come in and contaminate your production area another one might be such as when you're receiving delivery people have not maintained the right temperatures and then there are a buildup of bacteria on that item where now that item 
you know is essentially unusable okay so that's my three if you have any more include them and then come back unpause the video and we will move on to the next one 2.1 select type and size of equipment suitable to requirements so essentially you don't want to use a hundred pound um, uh, mincer where you only need you know a kilo produced so you'd use a smaller mincer machine you wouldn't want to go to your butcher and say I only want to uh, one kilo of mince but I want you to put it in the hundred kilo mincer there's no point they're gonna get that huge machine dirty and it's just gonna waste time your time it's gonna cost them more so there's no point so cookery equipment may include bain marie's blenders crockery cutlery food processors and mixers knives and knife sharpening equipment fryers grills and griddles and there's so much more if you're working at speciality venues you know if you're looking at Indian shops um, you're looking at having a tandoor you're looking at um, you know having uh, skewers and things like that that you'll use if you're going to a kebab place you've got uh, rotisserie ovens and um, meat rotisseries where you'll use a shaver to cut the meat off the large log of meat and add them to your kebabs you know so there's so many other equipment but these are essentially some of the simpler equipment that you'll find everywhere cooker equipment may include pans, salamanders, scales, slices, steamers, thermometers so identify the purpose of the following kitchen equipments so in case of a bain marie it is used to warm up or keep an item at a specified temperature that your bain marie can achieve so if you're Bain Marie, you can set it to let's say 80 degrees, which is out of the danger zone, and you would want to keep your food in there for the next two or three hours. Uh, you could do so. It will have hot water in there that the machine will keep to temperature and warm up your food accordingly. Uh, salamanders. So salamanders. Uh, there's top and bottom grillers which you can use to warm up your or. Uh, put a broil over your uh, you know it could be a pot pie it could be a cheese toasty whatever you'd want you'd want a maybe let's say you want a toast over the top that's where you would use a salamander so anything where it's got a top and bottom grill it gets quickly hot and it's um, giving you a nice char or a nice toast over your uh, food product then you've got slices so this could be meat slices this could be vegetable slices these could come in different sizes some machines you need to use frozen meats with some machines you need to have a specified size of vegetables otherwise it won't work because the the hole is a special size so essentially these slices enable you to like it is saying slice the food item a lot quicker than you would by hand steamers like the name is you know outlining it's steaming products such as dumplings, your wontons, anything that needs to be steamed, chicken, any meats that you'd want to steam. Sometimes you could use bamboo baskets in those steamers to give it a different feel. Uh, most steamers come with stainless steel baskets, um, but traditionally they use a layer of bamboo baskets on top in a pot with um, water in the pot and the steam rises through in in the middle of those bamboo baskets where you've got your items and they steam the product accordingly thermometers this can come digitally or analog um, you can you know you can find them in laser thermometers probe thermometers mercury thermometers in food aspects we don't really use the um, the mercury we'd be using the probe or the laser um, so in this case if you're using the probe you would insert it into the item to check the temperature or if you're using the laser you would shoot the laser over the top of the item to check the temperature okay so in answer those give me the descriptions for all of them like I've said to you use some of your own knowledge and then once you're done for those five come back unpause the video and we can move to the next one 
2.2 Safely assemble and ensure cleanliness of equipment before use. Assembling equipment. You should take considerable care when assembling equipment for cookery. It will be necessary to follow manufacturer's instructions and ensure that all of the components are installed correctly. If you don't do this, then the equipment is unlikely to function properly. You might even be injured as a result of an equipment malfunction. So, or more than that, you can injure others around you. Okay. Ensuring cleanliness of equipment. It is highly advisable to disconnect equipment from the electricity supply before you start cleaning. If this isn't possible, then you should lock down the controls and ensure that you won't be exposed to potentially dangerous moving parts. It might be necessary to wear protective gloves when handling blades and other components. The individual components may have to be removed and thoroughly washed using warm water and detergent. So you'll have a practical activity in the kitchen, you'll have to use um, you know a, a juicer so the juicer you'll have to assemble so you want to in this section you'd want to write how to assemble the juicer okay so you would have a the brand name of the juicer will be a Breville juicer okay and you will essentially need to know how to assemble it so you will go through putting the uh, the cap on for the insertion where you would insert your fruits you would put the pulp catcher on one side clip it on to the machine and then you would insert the juice catcher on the other which is the jug and you would lock that one in on the other side you'd make sure all aspects of the machine are in and then you would turn it on just to make sure that it's functioning properly once you're done you will dismantle it in the opposite direction and have it ready for the next person to use. All right. Identify four measures that may be taken for the assistance of safety when cleaning kitchen equipment. So when you're cleaning equipment, make sure if you can turn it off, turn it off or unplug it from electricity. Secondly, if you can't turn it off, make sure all buttons or any uh, levers that might be included in the machine are locked and can't be changed from position and also wear gloves or any PPE that you may need um, also if you're doing work in large machinery have a teammate let them know that you're doing it so that they know you are um, you know working on the machinery and you're also making sure you're cleaning it with detergent and warm to hot water if you need to sanitize the equipment, use biodegradable food grade sanitizer so that it doesn't, um, you know, after you've sanitized it, if it doesn't evaporate, it won't create much havoc or won't hurt any consumers. Alright, so I've mentioned a few measures there, or you only need to mention four. So, once you're done there, okay, you've got that there mention those four and then uh, come back to the video and pause it and we'll move on to the next one 2.3 use equipment safely and hygienically according to manufacturer instructions using equipment safely and hygienically you should appreciate that there will be a safety risk if you don't follow the manufacturer's instructions and take precautions routine checks should be carried out it will also be necessary to check the wiring for signs of deterioration and ensure that all of the safety guards are in place. If you identify any safety risks that you should report to the supervisor and ensure that the equipment is removed from the cooking area. It is essential that you follow these rules. Wash your hands thoroughly. Don't reach inside kitchen machinery when it is switched on or in operation. Ensure that the machinery is switched off before commencing cleaning duties. Only use kitchen equipment when you have been given the necessary training. Always act in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. 
follow the correct cleaning procedures. Okay, identify five rules that should be followed for assurance of safety when using the kitchen equipment. So essentially we'll be doing that. So the rules we want to follow, we want to wash our hands thoroughly. Uh, we don't want to reach inside the machinery when it is switched on or in operation. We want to ensure that the machinery is switched off before commencing any cleaning duties. We only want to use the equipment when we have been given the proper training for and we have been deemed competent to use them properly. Uh, we want to act in accordance with the manufacturing instructions and follow the correct cleaning procedures. So list those down and then we can move on to the next one when you're ready. So come back and pause the video and we'll move on. So 3.1 weigh and measure ingredients and create portions according to recipe. Weighing and measuring ingredients. If you're following a recipe then it should specify the exact quantities that were used in creation of the original dish. The recipe might also specify the number of people that the dish will cater for. You might have to adjust the quantities if you are preparing to serve groups of different sizes. You may also have to convert the weights into metrics that you understand. So if it's you know talking in pounds uh, you want to convert them to kilograms if you understand kilograms. If it's saying kilograms and you understand pounds, then convert them to pounds or ounces. But needs to be in a form where you understand. So activity 3A, convert the following quantities as specified. So it's saying 200 degrees uh, Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit. So you do the conversion there. You do 200 grams into imperial ounces. So you do the conversion. 3.5 kilograms into grams and 900 millimeters into pints, 3 Australian teaspoons into millimeters, uh, milliliters, sorry. So essentially the easiest way to do this is if you go onto Google, there are um, calculators or, um, you know, um, converters online that will convert automatically what you've put in and into the format that you're looking for. So type them into Google and you will find the required outputs. Uh, imagine that you have been given a recipe for a lasagna which is meant to serve four people. The following quantities are specified. So 400 grams of beef mince, 800 grams of mushrooms, 200 grams of tomatoes concentrate 140 grams of cheddar cheese. Now convert these quantities into preparation of making a lasagna which serves six people. Okay so we could do it two ways okay so because you've been given a recipe which is supposed to serve four people then we could divide this all these ingredients by four and then we would get the quantity of a single serve and then multiply that by six or we could um, essentially uh, multiply all of this by um, one and because we want another third so we multiply by one and one thirds so essentially we want another 33 percent more of all the quantities there so you can do it both ways you just need to show me the calculation so the easiest way is to do it in the two process where you divide it by four all of the ingredients and then multiply it by six which will give you the exact amount or you can multiply it straight away by one and one thirds which will give you the portion for six and how many quantities you need okay so complete that and we can move on to the next one so once you've done that in your learner workbook, come back and pause the video and we will move on. 3.2. Prepare, cut and portion ingredients according to recipe and cooking style. For food organizations, the preparation may include cleaning and preparing vegetables and other commodities. Cooking soups and other pre-cooked items, preparing and portioning, preparing, um, you know, using your mise en place, Selecting and using serviceware and equipment. Cutting. 
You are advised to place a damp cloth underneath a chopping board and ensure that it is secured. It will also be necessary to hold knives in the appropriate manner and wear protective gloves in some instances. You should hold the knife with your dominant hand and use the non-dominant hand to secure the ingredient. You will also need to curl your fingers away from the table uh, from the blade so that you don't cut yourself. Okay. So essentially we're doing this and we've got our knife and we're going back and forth. We are using this part, the knuckle, on our, uh, whichever is our um, leading hand and whichever is our dominant hand, we're just using the knife to go back and forth or up and down depending on which motion is feeling the best for you. Portioning. You should also account for the quantity of ingredients that will be included within the finished dish. It is common practice to cut down the ingredients into appropriate sizes before cooking and serving. You will find that it is easier to portion ingredients such as beetroot and food that are meant to be eaten cold after they have been cooked and chilled. Activity 3B. How should the concept of mise en place be applied when preparing ingredients ready for cooking? So mise en place, the concept of that is that anything that needs to be ready before we go into fruit production must be ready, right? So this is a French term. So this could, you know, you could be talking about equipment, you could be talking about food, items, you could be talking about cutlery, anything, right? But in this case, we're talking about the preparing ingredients. So we would want to portion, we would want to cut everything into the required amounts for our recipe and then once we're ready to cook we will be able to use them. If we didn't pre-prepare it would take us too long and then the customer would be waiting for too much uh, for too long time you know they, they wouldn't be happy with the amount of duration that they'd be waiting for. Right? So then we've got an activity so we'd be using cross and rock chopping techniques you will need to perform activity under supervision. So this is where you'll need to chop up some vegetables in your activity. So you'll be using, so this will be in your skill and performance. We'll be using your chef's knife to portion out and identify your required vegetables um, according to your recipes that you have. Okay. So you mentioned here just what you, what you would have done. You essentially would have portioned out um, your vegetables, wash them, cut them into the correct cuts that are specified in your recipe and then use the specified amount in your recipe into your dishes. You would have used proper uh, safety procedures using your knife and your chopping board and followed the, um, you know, using your knuckles to guide you and the knife's blade in a perpendicular position where you're using the knife to cut not your arms or your shoulders to cut because you will damage the product if you're using more force if your knife is blunt you will need to sharpen it before use otherwise you will damage the product and yourself and you might cut yourself okay so include the that information in number two if you've got more information from your activity include that as well when you're ready unpause the video and we can move to the next one 3.3 maximize waste to maximize profitability of food items so minimize waste to maximize profitability of food items prepared minimizing waste consider alternative uses for the kinds of ingredients which would otherwise be discarded um, have a system for the recording of ingredients which are running low or have run out Check the ingredients before buying and ensure that there is some time before the use by dates. Follow the storage instructions which are specified on the packaging. Specify six measures that you would uh, that may be taken uh, for the minimization of waste. So, like we've listed there, you want to consider, um, you know, what. Um, other things could you be using those discarded portions for? You could use them for stock. Um, you could use them for stuffing. You could use them for composting. 
uh, having a system such as an online system or software system to record any stock or if you're running low or to record stock that you've used or see which one is popular which items are selling most also when you're buying ingredients you want to buy with the maximum use by dates so you have the most leeway between when you need them and for when they will be um, need to be disposed of you also want to have your storage conditions to the optimal you know arrangements so you want to have your dry storage area free of pests you want to have the temperatures to a, a room temperature between 18 degrees to 20 degrees you want to have low humidity in the dry storage if it's in the fridge you want to have it around 5 degrees or below if it's um, you know if you're putting it in the freezer you would put it in um, somewhere where it's negative 18 or below things like that okay you're also thinking about maybe how do you um, you know reuse some of the things that you've um, already cooked maybe if you've if you're cooking roast chicken um, for dinner then the following mor if morning or lunch you could produce chicken wraps for the chickens that you haven't used it's just repurposing items on a new menu or a menu item that you could sell again in another aspect so complete that question use the ideas that I've given you use some of your own ideas when you're ready unpause the video and come back and we can move on to the next one select and use cookery methods for dishes following standard recipes cookery methods boiling poaching steaming braising stewing roasting baking and grilling shallow frying deep frying stir frying pan frying so complete the following table giving at least five examples of cooking methods and three foods that are suitable um, so if we're looking at four by four we would say okay um, if we're looking at potato chips we would be um, deep frying if we're looking at um, roasted chicken we would be baking it in the oven if we're looking at a steak we would either be grilling or pan frying um, what else if we were cooking a stew we'd be um, you know pot roasting or we would be cooking it over long periods of time if we were let's say producing a toasted sandwich we would be broiling in a salamander so I've given you my sort of ideas um, fill in those and then if you have some of your own put them in there once you're done come back and we can move on to the next one okay complete cooking processes in a logical planned and safe manner developing plans and following logical cookery processes if you are using a recipe then you should read it through from start to finish before you start cooking you should ensure that you have all of the necessary ingredients for cooking your chosen dish you are advised to spend a little time developing a workflow plan which can be applied to the cooking process examples of a workflow plan, uh, plan. so if we're thinking about you know cooking something in the oven we would preheat the oven once we put the temperature there we would start preparing our ingredients to have our mise en place we would slice the meat and add other ingredients for cooking we would heat the vegetables on a hob or a pan we would create the sauce for the meat and pour it over the meat in the pan and then place the dish in the oven so that it would roast so these safety measures should be followed wearing protective heat resistant gloves when necessary not wearing loose fitting clothing keeping the hair tied back and covered if appropriate 
removing jewelry or ensuring that it cannot come into contact with food, keeping the food preparation area clean and tidy, mopping up any spillages to prevent people from slipping over. These safety measures should also be followed, washing your hands before handling food at appropriate times throughout the cooking process. So whenever you would go from one dish to the other, you definitely any process to the next, you'd want to be washing your hands, changing gloves, whatever it might be, checking electronic uh, connections and ensuring that they aren't um, frayed or exposed, not leaving pots and pans unattended while heating, clearing up any debris and remove obstacles from the cooking area, separating towels and linen from direct heat. Also plastics as well, you want to keep them away from direct heat. Create a simple no more than eight stages of a workflow plan for a cooking process that you are expected to complete. So ex you've got a example back there that you need to, that you could use um, as an example, but Think about um, if we were going to um, talk about cooking a, uh, a naan bread, right? So we would first, even before we um, uh, warm up our tandoori oven, we need to make our dough because we need to let it rise, right? So our tandoori oven, let's say, takes about 30 minutes to 40 minutes to heat up we would need at least two hours for our dough to rise so we would first mix our dough with our yeast and water and sugar maybe add some yogurt put in our flour um, roll it up and then we would put it in a pan an oiled pan cover it up leave it in a warm place to um, double in size uh, to let the yeast work and add more air and gas into the the dough then we would portion out our dough equally into whatever um, weight we might have. So that might take another 40 minutes because we want that portion of the dough ball to rise again. We'd leave that in a warm area and then we would start our oven. We would preheat our oven. We would, let's say, get our garnishes ready, such as our chopped coriander, our garlic, our butter, or ghee in this case. And then we would, once our tandoor is ready, and up to the temperature, so you'd want roughly around the 300 degree mark in the um, temperature of the wall. You would find a dough ball out of your tray, roll it out, and then... Um, stick it onto the tandoori wall using a pillow or a skewer depending on how you'd like to make the bread you could also put it on a grill um, once you've got that you're looking for a hard cook around the edges once it inflates you would take it off the tandoor wall scrape it off with your skewer and spatula and then you would coat it with butter and coriander or your garlic mince or whatever you might need to top it off accordingly so create something like that step by step put them in boxes with arrows and finally you would have a uh, stage workflow plan all right specify six measures that you can uh, take for the assurance of safety during the cooking process so this one's pretty easy we've gone through it um, you know you'd wear protective um, equipment not wearing loose clothing keeping hair tied back up um, keeping the food preparation area clean avoiding any spillages washing your hands regularly changing gloves checking electronic equipment not having pots and pans unattended or, while you're cooking cleaning up as you go throughout your cooking process so you don't have a large mess that you have to handle afterwards um, keeping towels plastics away from direct heat or open flames so include any six of those and once you're done come back and we can move to the next one so 
4.3 identify problems with the cooking process and take corrective action so problems that may be identified overfilling the pan uh, failing to preheat the hob or oven not considering the oven's characteristics using the wrong substitutions failing to taste while cooking using poor quality ingredients undercooking or overcooking the food item you might have the following responsibilities buying fresh ingredients and cooking equipment providing staff members with updated training and guidance discarding any food that is thought to have been contaminated updating policies and procedures changing the temperatures of fridges and freezers activity 4c identify six problems that may be encountered during the cooking process give four uh, examples of corrective actions that may be taken when addressing problems with the cooking process so identify six problems that may be encountered so very easy we might be overfilling the pan we might be failing to preheat the oven uh, not considering the characteristics of the oven using the wrong substitutions failing to taste the food while cooking not adding the right amount of salt or water using poor quality of ingredients under cooking or over cooking so that's basically the um, the things that you need to consider and more there's so many more but there are at least six for your question one okay all right so give four examples of corrective actions that may be taken when addressing problems with the cooking process so you could be you know you're always you should be trying to buy fresh ingredients always providing staff members and even yourself with the most updated training and guidance discard any food that is thought to be contaminated or off updating policies and procedures regularly so that everybody is you know aware of what contaminations and things could be um, you know exposed of within your premises changing the temperatures of fridges and freezers and also logging them regularly so that they are um, you know correct to your ingredients um, specifications or your manufacturing specifications okay so note the four down there and then once you're done come back and pause the video and we can move on to the next one okay work cooperatively with colleagues to ensure timely preparation of dishes working cooperatively with colleagues You'll be expected to demonstrate excellent team working skills to ensure that the finalized dishes meet the highest standards. It is important to recognize and respect the contributions that are made by your colleagues. You should consider the reasons for alternative viewpoints and be prepared to compromise. Any disagreements should be addressed at the earliest opportunity so that they can be resolved with minimum stress and fuss. Team working skills. Giving positive reinforcement when colleagues do good work. Providing positive and constructive feedback. Listening carefully and processing instructions using open and closed questions appropriately. Providing guidance and supervision as necessary. Not making judgments based on personal characteristics. Exercising patience and tolerance, uh, tolerating mistakes. So activity, you need to prepare and cook a dish in collaboration with another two colleagues. Should demonstrate excellent team working skills and ensure the dish is completed to a high standard uh, promptly. So in this case, you'd be, you might be doing a, a noodle dish or a pasta dish. And you would need to essentially have three stations um, work together to cut the items so this will be in your skill and performance tasks. Um, you would portion out the ingredients according to your recipe. You would essentially um, create your stations for the boiling of your noodle or pasta. Then you would go into creating your pasta sauce or your garnish. Once your mixture is all done, you've tasted it everybody's happy you would pop in your pasta then you would check your salt levels spice levels whatever you'd like and then present it on the plate equally in three portions and then present to your trainer to be assessed so you want to jot that down 
jot your personal experiences down from that as well and then we can move forward um, to the next one so when you're ready um, complete that write a few tasks down there things down there come back unpause the video when you're ready and we will move to the next one so present dishes on appropriate serviceware Presenting dishes, if you take great care and ensure superb presentation, then the diners are likely to be impressed and expectant. It is absolutely essential that you choose appropriate serviceware in order to show off your dish. There should be enough space on serving plates for the spacing and attractive presentation of food. It is important for plates and bowls to be at the appropriate temperature before adding any food. Serviceware includes platters, dishes and bowls, cutlery, serving utensils and chopsticks. Setting tables. It is very important for the serviceware to have been thoroughly cleaned. It will then be necessary to lay a tablecloth and position the placemats accordingly. You should begin with the knife and fork for the main course. The fork should be placed on the inner left of the placemat and the knife to the inner right. So activity 5A, this is a practical activity where you will be required to set up a table in preparation for serving. So this will be right after you have created your last practical activity and you would um, essentially serve your food to your team members. And then, so three diners, you know, you would set up the table for each of you. You should choose appropriate serviceware accordingly. Um, and it will be necessary for you to set placemats and cutlery in readiness for customers arrival so once you guys are ready you'll serve the food when they're there and then move on okay so essentially we'd want to have these uh, rules to be followed so we'd want to, the serviceware to be clean we want the right serviceware so if we're serving noodles we want a knife and fork and a spoon um, necessarily we'd lay a tablecloth or a placemat underneath the plate um, we would put the knife and fork um, one which would be the inner left the fork and place the knife on the inner right with the spoon and then we would wait for our customers once the customers arrive we would present them with the dish okay so jot that down there and then we will, once you're ready, you've completed that, we will move on to the next one. 5.2. Add garnishes and accompaniments according to standard recipes. Examples of garnishes. Springs of rosemary, chives, croutons, chopped herbs, tomatoes, vegetables, juliennes. So you could have so many more. You could have dry, um, you know, herbs, sprinkling of, you know, nuts and things. Um, seeds and many other things, right? And accompaniments may include poppadoms, naan bread, salsa, rice, chips, potatoes. Um, could be salads, you know, small portions of salads. Could be um, bread rolls, dinner rolls, sweet buns. Um, you know, gravy. So many. There's so many. Right, activity 5B. Give five examples of garnishes which may be added for the enhanced appearance and flavor of dishes. So we've got um, herbs, um, freshly chopped chives, croutons, chopped herbs, tomatoes, vegetables, um, seeds, nuts, crushed nuts, and so many more oils, fresh oils. Okay, so jot at least five of them down for that one, the first one. And let's move on to number two. Give five examples of accompaniments which could be included for the purpose of complementing the flavors and enhancing the appearance of dishes. So you've got poppadoms, naan bread, salsa, rice, chips, potatoes, breads, and so many. But you only need five, so jot five of them down there. And then once you're done, come back and we'll move on to the next one. So pause the video now, complete that, come back, and we will move on. Clean work area and dispose or store surplus and reusable byproducts according to organizational procedures, environmental considerations, and cost reduction initiatives. Your organization may assign 
these cleaning duties. Disposing of waste, mopping floors, cleaning cooking utensils, cleaning plates and glasses, keeping corridors and aisles free of clutter, dusting and polishing, placing dustbin bags in appropriate receptacles, vacuuming and inspecting the workplace. Disposal and storage. It is likely that you will have surplus ingredients which can be kept for some time after the service period. You should ensure that they are rapidly transferred to appropriate storage environments for the maintenance of quality and freshness. Those ingredients and food containers that have to be discarded should be placed in the appropriate dustbins. Reusable byproducts may include meat and fish offcuts, burns and trimmings, fruit peelings and offcuts, vegetable peelings and offcuts, unused portions. So you could um, you know you could use a lot of them in stocks, you could use them for um, composting, you could use them to dry out and have flavor components as um, you'll see frozen berries and things like that to add color to many different things not necessarily to add taste but to use their distinctive color and use them for another aspect so you would see uh, naturally green pasta is made out of the skin of cucumber and zucchini so they um, you know shave off and peel the skin off zucchinis and cucumbers blend it right down get that green sift out any thick pulp and take that green liquid and create pasta dough which then they make normal pasta with they will have that green natural pasta color but they've used um, the offcuts from the cucumber and zucchini so activity 5c this is your last activity so let's get on with it once you've done this essentially your learner workbook will be completed so I want you to hand it over to your trainer send it to them via email and they will let you know if you've done it correctly or incorrectly and then we can move on so after this when we've completed this activity I want you to go and do the multiple choice questions if you've got them correctly or at least the pass mark your trainers will be notified automatically and then there are three more assessments which are the knowledge skill and, and performance which your trainer will instruct you accordingly uh, as you're progressing throughout the course so let's get on to this activity identify five cleaning duties that may fall under your scope of responsibility so if you're thinking we could be disposing of waste mopping floors cleaning cooking utensils cleaning plates and glasses keeping corridors and aisles free of clutter dusting and polishing placing dustbin bags in appropriate receptacles vacuuming inspecting the workplace as normal okay so identify any five that I've mentioned there all right and give five examples of reusable food byproducts so you could be using meat and fish offcuts for stock could you be using bones and trimmings for stock or even fillings uh, you could be using fruit peelings and offcuts to add flavor or color um, such as pasta dough or uh, could be to pastry you'd be adding vegetable peelings and offcuts such as you know like I said to give color unused portions for another new item that you could produce so if, let's say if we're talking about roast chicken and um, that you've done last night for dinner and you haven't sold all your portions you could reuse the chicken meat into fresh chicken wraps and sell the item in another form okay all right so just um, mention at least a minimum of five once you've completed that submit the learner workbook to your trainers if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me or any of your trainers my email is admin at wisemaneducation.com.au if you want to give any feedback or um, you know just want to say hi don't hesitate to do so uh, once you're done with this one submit all the documents to your trainers when you're complete and ready to go they will instruct you on how to do your further three assessments so hopefully I will see you on the next one and take care and see you then